Invisibility doesn't come up often in multiplayer games, but when it does, it's always very hit or miss. About to swing! You know, it's difficult to balance things around being invisible. Get it right, and it's fun for the user of the invisibility, and fun for the possible victim. Get it wrong, and well, it's nothing but frustration and trouble for all players. No oh boy, alright, where to start? Uh, I guess let's start with something that needs saying. When I say invisibility, I just mean an ability in video games that makes it so that other players or AI cannot see you. You're a long way from France, boy. I do not give a single shit if the lore of your game specifically states that it is an invisibility, it's active camouflage, or it's vanish. Listen, that is really cool for your game to have in-depth lore like that, but it functions the same as invisibility, so I will be referring to it as such. I'm actually genuinely so if I offend any hardcore gamers out there with my terminology when I call some dumb shit invisibility when it's active camouflage or something. What I'm not talking about is the ghost ability in some games that let you phase through things. They often let you be invisible too, but I'm just not talking about that, alright? Alright, cool. Okay, now away from that, and let's look at single player games first. I know the title of this video says specifically multiplayer games, but it's important, so bear with me. Invisibility in single player games is tricky to balance. The way AI works is that it only attacks if it knows you're there, otherwise they'd just be constantly swinging or shooting at nothing, which would be dumb. But AI has no eyes, so what games will do is just tell them that there's no player? And that creates a pretty severe problem, because if you can attack while invisible, and the AI still isn't told by the game engine that you're there, then you might as well be invincible. Because of that rather large game-breaking issue, most single-player invisibilities have it so actions, or getting too close to AI, alerts them to your attention, at which point they'll act like you're completely visible, or they'll have it so doing an action or attacking just outright removes the invisibility entirely. So what's the problem with that, right? That sounds like a pretty fair representation of how real people would detect invisibility in a real-life setting, but they're still not people. Unexperienced players may find that it isn't fun because it doesn't feel like you're invisible, while experienced players may find it makes the game too easy. Invisibility in specifically role-playing games could also just add to the player's stealth stat for a short time by a large margin. And high stealth is something I am not getting into, it's very difficult to balance in games, and also has been talked to death by people who play a lot more RPG games than me. So seeing all of that, you might think that balancing invisibility in multiplayer games would be far easier. I mean, you don't have to worry about how human your AI works because there's no AI, it's all just humans. You just add a few lines of code and now the character model of this guy can't be seen by this guy and uh, easy as that, done. Uh, yeah. Invisibility has showed up in a multitude of multiplayer genres. From MOBAs to FPS games, it really does like to squirt its gross juices all around the gaming scene. But I gotta hand it to a lot of these devs. They know how to make a system that properly telegraphs info to players while still allowing the invisible player to be invisible. I mean, most devs anyway. Invisibility balance in multiplayer is extremely difficult because, like you probably already know, it needs to be fair for both the user of the invisibility and the other players that have to fucking deal with it. So how do you do that? Or at least how have other games done that? Games mostly balance invisibility by giving clues, so the little detectives on the other team can piece together those clues. These clues obviously can't be too out there, otherwise why even use it at all? Like seriously, Minecraft, why the fuck would I want to use this outside of using it on your friends that totally just don't know what happened and totally aren't pretending to be completely retarded for the sake of your video? Anyway, devs adding invisibility to multiplayer games usually add clues so it isn't overpowered, or they make the class or champion just kinda shitty, balancing it around it having invisibility. The obvious example that I'm sure is screaming inside of everyone's head, and also the reason I'm even making this video in the first place, is the spy from Team Fortress 2. Excellent. The Invis Watch is actually really well balanced. It has a lot of flaws that help intelligent players detect spies. To name one of the biggest and most important one, in the case of the spy using the invisibility, it has a time limit. Invisibility mechanics need time limits. An example of when they don't is Sombra from Overwatch or the Cloak and Dagger from TF2, and both are notorious for being annoying. You don't really see the Cloak and Dagger too much because of its compromised ammo, but you still see a lot of people mocking it, including myself. It's annoying and dumb. I can't get killed if the enemy never sees me. But the spy himself is a weak class. Oh, oh. This is TF2 101. The spy is the weakest class in the game. Like seriously, imagine if the spy wasn't the weakest class. 
This evident problem is obvious in the Halloween TF2 event. In Halloween mode, there's a spell that lets any class go invisible. That kind of power on a class like the Heavy is fucking nutty. Not that balance matters in Halloween mode, like seriously who gives a shit, not me. This is all just to point out that invisibility is powerful, and shouldn't be taken lightly. Granted, the invisibility spell acts a little bit different than the Spy's Cloak, but ignore that. Three, two, one, go! You can immediately tell when characters or champions were just given invisibility as a tool, and it's annoying for everyone. Paladins does this sort of thing a lot, Sha Lin and Sky being the most notable examples. They're perfectly fine as it is, but because they need abilities, the devs just threw on invisibility, and as a result, the invisibility they have is poorly balanced and most of all frustrating. Not to say they're super overpowered or anything, just that they're frustrating. I play Sha Lin whenever I play Paladins, but I still know how annoying it is when people can't kill me because I go invisible and run and hide. When doing research and asking around the web, I found lots of people that said, yeah, invisibility is cool, but it needs a lot of clues. An example was this guy here, who was talking about the cloak mechanic in Neo Tokyo. Now, I don't play Neo Tokyo, so I won't pretend to know everything, or really that much at all, but he mentioned audio, as well as a few other things, but I'll get to them later. Invisibility mechanics need audio cues. In Neo Tokyo, there's, and I quote from random internet user, a loud noise that people can hear within a 20 meter radius. And yeah, this makes sense. If you're stripping away most of the ability to see, you should really up the ability to hear. In lots of games, there's this sort of decloak sound effect. TF2 players, I'm sure, have this fucking sound burn into the back of their minds, and I'm gonna play it in a sec just to give you all Vietnam flashbacks. The most common of all audio cues is footsteps. Now, footsteps is kind of difficult because although you want to add it, there will always be those turbo tryhards that change their audio output so that bass is boosted and they can hear footsteps and gunshots more clearly. There's no way to prevent these guys, so uh, I don't know, we, we can just deal with them. They're not that big a problem anyway. <laughs> Top-down MOBAs like Dota 2, League of Legends, and Heroes of the Storm love to put in invisibility. I don't play MOBA games at all, so I needed to do research, so I found there's a lot of invisibility examples in specifically League of Legends. Now I personally have a collective 30 hours maybe in League, so I really needed help with research on this one. After asking around the web a bit, I found some League of Legends gamers that were very informative and helpful. Something I found out about not just League of Legends, but other MOBAs like Heroes of the Storm and Dota 2 is that invisibility is used for two main uses, those being to ambush and to escape. Whereas the Spy in TF2 has a more versatile invisibility, MOBA invis is usually catered towards a specific single purpose. And you'll notice mysteriously omitted from that two-point list is ironically the most obvious purpose of invisibility, sneaking around, you know, doing things undetected. Like the Spy does, not ambushing per se, but getting to a position where you can ambush people. From my understanding, it isn't used much because there isn't much of a purpose for it. If your main goal is avoiding confrontation entirely, you can do that without needing to be invisible. But again, I don't play a lot of MOBAs, this is from my logical perception and research, so you can point me out in the comments if I am wrong, uh, totally. Now what I found interesting is that both of these uses of invisibility have different limitations, or rather different things that make them frustrating to play against. When it comes to ambushing or attacking, invisibility mechanics can't allow you to attack while invisible or attack instantly from being invisible. This is totally true, not just in all MOBAs, but in all games. Look at TF2 again, the spy can't backstab immediately from being invisible, he has to take a second to decloak, which also makes a sound. Seriously, imagine if he could do that, that would be fucking madness. Or not even just backstabbing, but getting a butter knife or a revolver shot or something, it would be crazy. Doing that telegraphs no information. Sky from Paladins can literally perform damage dealing attacks while invisible and it is stupidly frustrating. It can't exist in a multiplayer environment without ruining a lot of fun for the player being attacked. One of the League of Legends gamers that helped me out also went on a pretty long rant about this exact thing from my understanding, and although I know absolutely nothing about any of this, I can agree it's frustrating when you just get suddenly killed. But what about escaping? The spy, as mentioned earlier, and as you probably already know, is a pretty weak guy. He needs to escape sometimes. It also happens in League or in Paladins with the Bowie arrow -y guy. What makes those annoying or fair? Well, a couple things. First of all, invisibility mechanics can't let you immediately become invisible. You can't just become invisible. That's annoying. The game needs to telegraph to the other players that this person has gone invisible. If you think that defeats the purpose of going invisible, well, it doesn't. 
The spy does his little fade out, League of Legends characters have a fucking explosion like everything in that game, but the important part is that they're still invisible after the fact. It just isn't as annoying as say, the Dead Ringer or the Bow Guys Escape from Paladins, which don't only not telegraph that you've gone invisible, but actively try and trick you into thinking they haven't. They aren't broken or overpowered, in the case of the Dead Ringer specifically, it's in my opinion a way worse option than the stock invis, but it's just so frustrating to deal with. And as a heavy main, if there's a spy using the Dead Ringer, I have to constantly be on my guard because I can never definitively tell when a spy is dead or not. There is the kill sound, but that only works if you're the one killing him, and even then you don't know where he is now. It's all frustrating. It prevents everyone on the opposing team from being able to tell if they need to have their guard up or not. Which doesn't make them play worse by the way, that isn't a hidden upside of the Dead Ringer, and doesn't make the Bow Guys escape or the Dead Ringer any better, it just makes the game a thousand times more stressful and unfun. Another thing with escaping is that invisibility mechanics need visual clues. Audio clues are great and all, but imagine this scenario. You hear someone who's invisible around you. Now where is he? Yeah, that's right, you can't pinpoint his fucking location with audio cues alone, it doesn't work. It's even worse with top-down games like MOBAs where you can't have surround sound, you don't even have a general direction of where that invisible bitch is. Shimmers are a great compromise in my mind, and they come in different variations. Being shot or bumping into players is the most common, but there are others like uh, sunlight or just moving. Okay, these sound bad. Pat from the future here, and I thought it was important to note that there are a lot of cases in games where the shimmers are constant. You see it in games like Halo or Neo Tokyo, and although it seems bad, it's important to remember that the color is the most important part, so if you're not actively looking for them, it's easy to miss them even when their invisibility has what seems like such obvious clues. They're both called active camo, but you have other games like League of Legends which call pure invisibility camo, so the term gets really muddied, and it's easier to just call it all invisibility. Anyway, they're great for a few reasons. If you think like a game developer and want a higher skill ceiling, you may think to remove shimmers. Now people finding out where that invisible guy is have to have more experience in player movement, but you can still have that experience with shot exposing shimmers. If anything, it increases the skill ceiling of the invisible player because now they have to put more experience and mental energy into their own movement. The last thing to mention here is that invisibility mechanics can't be an afterthought. What I mean by this is that you actually have to build a class or a champion with all of its skills and abilities around the invisibility function you plan to give it, unless you plan on making that invisibility completely useless. The Spy in TF2 was clearly designed around the central theme. Recon and Assault in Neo Tokyo, though I don't feel were created around it, clearly had a major part of their ability set revolving around this ability. You can't just slap it on and go, hey guys, look, it's another ability. That's how you make your character super fucking frustrating to go up against. Like a black box conch soldier, they won't destroy your team or annihilate you, they'll just be these annoying fucking flies buzzing around your team that you can't kill at all. Alright, so these are my guidelines for adding invisibility to multiplayer games. Notice how I said guidelines and not rules, because like art, there will always be exceptions, but you know, guidelines, whatever. Now that all of that is out of the way, it's time for some controversial-ish opinions. Not mine, but ones I've picked up along the research journey. First, let's look at the big picture of what people think of invisibility. So I set up a poll on Scrap.tf to see what people thought of invisibility in multiplayer games. Now ignoring my typo that Scrap.tf didn't let me fix, we see that a majority of players believe it depends entirely on the execution, with the next piece of pie being enjoying invisibility. So it seems that a lot of people either actively enjoy it or have an open mind about it when seeing it in games. This actually surprised me because from my experience, I've seen far more people bitch about invisibility than praise it, though that could be a result of negative opinions having louder voices in general, but whatever. So yeah, people like invisibility, or at least can like it. Obviously not every instance of invisibility is equal, but overall, yeah, cool. Now let's dive into some individual opinions. There have been lots of people who've stated the balance of invisibility revolves around the weaknesses of the class or champion that has it. Again, in the context of TF2, this argument I found it's brought up a lot. I agree to an extent because Spy is without a doubt the worst 1v1 class in the game and always should be, but he can also backstab which is a major advantage which is made far more powerful by the addition of invisibility. So I don't really know how to feel on this one to be honest. Spy is kinda special where all of his attributes revolve around him being a sneaky. But yeah, I totally agree with the idea of balancing invisibility with the weaknesses of a class's one-on-one -on -one potential, otherwise you'd have a scout that can show up at any time which sounds no fun. You like that, chuckle nuts? And after thinking about it more, I'm 99% sure that that's what all these guys meant, so you know what, I totally agree. Here's a spicy opinion that I will read out in its fullness because it's an interesting view. 
They are the main reason I hated Spy when I first started playing TF2, and six years later, I still hate him. It's a first person shooter, how can I shoot you if I can't even see you? People always complain about Sniper, but even if he got a good shot from a mile away, at least snipers are visible on the map somewhere. Now here's the thing with this take. I agree with it, kinda. When you're focusing on a game, you can take advantage of a game's invisibility weaknesses. But what about when you just want to go full stoner hour for a bit and listen to lo-fi tunes or some shit? You can't, because the very existence of invisibility mechanics at all in your game require you to be on full alert. But at the same time, despite not being a spy main or playing invisibility-relying classes or champions when I play other games, I understand the enjoyment of sneaking around, especially when your invisibility has such a large margin for error. So that's the part where I don't really agree with it. Uh, invisibility is fun, dude. Being ambushed by it isn't, but that comes back to my little list. Sneaking around undetected is fun as fuck, and taking that enjoyment away just because I want to turn off all sounds might be a little selfish. And besides, I could always just go to a 24-7 two-foot server or something like that on other games. I don't know, dude. This is a tough one. As you can see, I'm really conflicted, so uh, give me your thoughts. And uh, that's the end. I'm sorry for wasting your time. Goodbye. <laughs>